Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for coming. We're going to get started here. My name is John Brooker. I'm with MUSC Sustainability and Recycling, and this is the future of transit in Charleston with Low Country Rapid Transit. Just a quick intro before we get started. Our department works on various initiatives in recycling and waste management, energy and water, food, climate, transportation, and green building. We have these events every month, and we also record them on video. So if you have somebody that couldn't make it that you want to share this video with, um, our YouTube channel has all of our videos from past, and we'll have this video up in about a week or two. And then also, if you want to hear about more things that we do and hear more about events like this, we have our sign-up for our newsletter in the back. You can also find us on social media at MUSC Go Green, and that's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and we're also on Yammer. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sharon from Low Country Rapid Transit. Thank you for joining us, Sharon. Can we have a round of applause? Great. Thank you for coming out. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Well, I appreciate you inviting us out to um, talk about the Low Country Rapid Transit. It's a very significant project for our region and will have a direct impact on MUSC and, and provide some more mobility options for you. But before I get started talking about the project, just by a show of hands, how many of you ride transit, either CARTA or the DASH system here in Charleston? So a good number of you. And how many of you have ridden transit in other cities when you travel places? So just about everyone here. And so really what Low Country Rapid Transit is about is really make creating a world-class transit system where you have options through the existing bus services or through Low Country Rapid Transit, which will be our region's first major capital transit project to give you fast, dedicated transit access um, through the region. Uh, the Low Country Rapid Transit um, project is really a response to the growth that is coming to our region. While the growth is good and prosperity is good, it also brings a lot of congestion to our roadways. It provides limited access via transit. If you're stuck in traffic, so are the transit buses. They can't move any faster in the current um, environment. And so back in 2016, Charleston County passed a transportation sales tax, and one of the projects that was identified as part of that was the Low Country Rapid Transit. Low Country Rapid Transit is a 26-mile bus rapid transit corridor um, that came out of the I-26 ALT study that was completed back in 2014 and 2015. It was a 15-month analysis. We looked at all the potential modes of transit that could um, travel along the I-26 corridor, so really connecting Charleston, North Charleston, and Somerville with a fast, reliable transit system that doesn't have to be stuck in traffic. So we looked at light rail. We looked at commuter rail. We looked at a lot of various other alternatives. And out of that study, Bus Rapid Transit along Rivers Avenue, US um, 78, US 52, was the recommended alternative to move forward. So I'm going to show a brief video that kind of describes Bus Rapid Transit. It is a new transit technology for our region. Um, it's different than just your traditional transit bus in a roadway and traffic. It's, it's a transit bus that's stylized to be a lot like light rail. It has its own dedicated lane. It has permanent stations and a lot of other features. And this video kind of describes some of those. The Low Country Rapid Transit Project is a proposed 23-mile bus rapid transit system between Charleston, North Charleston, and Somerville. As South Carolina's first mass transit system, Low Country Rapid Transit will provide safe, reliable travel connect communities, and energize economic opportunities along the corridor. Low Country Rapid Transit would provide residents with dependable and frequent transportation. Level boarding and station level payments will make getting on and off the system faster and more convenient. Dedicated lanes would improve mobility in the corridor. It is high frequency, Service will operate every 10 minutes during peak travel times and can get you from Somerville to downtown Charleston in an hour. The system will improve mobility. New station locations will provide riders access to key areas like employment hubs, recreation, schools, tourism, and other community resources. This is not just another bus route. 
The system will utilize advanced signal technology to make travel more reliable while preparing the region for the future of autonomous vehicles and other innovations. It is environmentally conscious. The new buses will reduce emissions by relying on alternative fuels and electric power. It will connect communities by incorporating sidewalks, bus lanes, and safe pedestrian crossways. The project will promote an increased connectivity between communities to bolster opportunities and activity for residents and businesses. So this map shows the study area for the project. This is the alignment that, that came out of the I-26 ALT study. When we completed that study, it ended at Line Street in the peninsula, but we knew we ultimately had to get to the MUSC where we have a large concentration of, of employees, students, and, and people that are trying to access the medical district. So we are currently in the process of identifying alternatives of how we get through the peninsula um, with these transit buses to serve the MUSC with a, with a transit stop as, as the termini. So we're looking at various different alternatives in the, in the peninsula as we move through the process. We're looking at Meeting Street, we're looking at the Low Line, we're looking at the Crosstown to see what makes the most sense. It can keep the buses moving quickly, staying on time and getting you where you need to go reliable, in a reliable manner, as well as um, one that might be more competitive than driving your car, finding parking, taking a, a trans transit bus from your parking to your place of work. So um, the rest of the corridor, uh, if you see here downtown Somerville, we're still finalizing the, the terminus in downtown Somerville. But if you look along the US 78 corridor, there's several park and ride locations that have been identified. So throughout the system, there will be park and rides where if you live in an area where you can't necessarily walk to the station or there is not a bus that will take you to the station, you can drive, park your car, have uh, amenities such as shelter, bathroom access, make sure that your car is parked there throughout the day and can stay there, is safe and secure, and when you um, return it will be there. So these parking rides will be uh, located along the US 78 corridor and the um, a Toronto corridor where we're about to open the brand new uh, Melnick um, park and ride will all connect to this system. So you'll be able to park and hop on the faster system, but it will not replace our express bus services. Those are a, a different type of service. They're more direct, but there may be opportunities with this line to use the dedicated guideway with those buses to provide direct service along the guideway so we can bypass some of that congestion on I-26. Through the Rivers Avenue North Charleston corridor, it will operate in its own dedicated lane. If you think of the center median in Rivers Avenue, there's a lot of room there. We'll have stations uh, situated in the center median, which will allow uh, pedestrian crosswalks along that uh, corridor. We'll talk a little bit about pedestrian safety that exists today along that corridor. And then as we move into the neck area, we're looking at King Street and Meeting Street, see what the fastest, most reliable alternative is for there, and then into the peninsula. So um, some of the project usage that's listed up here came from the I-26 ALT study. Uh, if we did nothing to land use, if we did nothing to the existing transit system, we'd get about 2 million riders per year on this route, but we know that the area has grown since we did this study. We've seen this number increase, but also this will be an opportunity to really look at the entire transit system as a whole and look at the feeder routes and how they connect to these systems and how they're timed together, create some new transit hubs that really provide that seamless, safe connection between routes so once you hit a station, you can either use transit, you could use a ride share, you could use a, a private shuttle system. There will be multiple ways, biking, um, pedestrian access as well. Uh, as I mentioned, Charleston County passed a sales tax. Uh, $250 million of that was allocated toward this project. $180 million was toward capital construction. The remainder was operating funds. So once this system is open and running, it has some operating funds to ensure it's sustainable, which is really important as part part of the Federal Transit Administration, which is the grant that we'll be pursuing to complete the construction. So the total construction costs we anticipate to be about $360 million. So um, we do have half of that funding in place, but the rest will compete for federal grants. Uh, but there are a lot of benefits to the community um, that this project brings. It's more than just a transit project. It is a, a complete look at the Rivers Avenue corridor to create that uh, improved mobility for bike, pedestrian, even if you drive on Rivers Avenue, you'll see improvements at some of these locations as we look to redesign the street to accommodate the BRT. It'll increase connectivity to communities, some of which have been separated by uh, railroad infrastructure and things like that. They, they really provide that increased connectivity and will help to support some of the future development that we know is coming to the region. We can concentrate some of that development toward these station areas so that as growth comes in, they don't necessarily have to add another car to the roadways. 
Um, so what, one of the things we did was really look at some of the existing conditions along the corridor to really understand what's happening today. And this corridor is a really critical part of our economy. It hits MUSC, it hits multiple um, educational facilities, it, it hits some of the major employers. There'll be a um, shuttle connection to the airport. So it really serves the heart of the region. Um, I-26 is also our our primary corridor for commerce, for evacuations. So it's a critical corridor to ensure that we have flow of traffic and congestion. And this project will increase the capacity to allow for more people to move through the corridor without adding to that congestion. One of the things we looked at was traffic and safety. So um, Rivers Avenue is one of our most dangerous roadways in the region. Uh, the crash rate on Rivers Avenue exceeds the statewide average by almost 200%. And we collected data from all of the intersections on Rivers Avenue. But as you can see, we've had 32 fatal crashes. This is over a three-year time frame uh, up till 2018. We've had 1,800 injuries. 78 pedestrian crashes and 49 bike crashes. Um, so we've had seven fatalities for pedestrians and bicyclists on that corridor. And some of the reasons that happens, it has to do with the road design. We have unusual U-turn intersections, just really fast merges that have to occur in lane crossings. So what this project will do, it will take a look at the entire Rivers Avenue corridor, add crosswalks. We have about a five-mile span where there are no crosswalks. It will add um, better flow, easier um, storage for cars that are making turns, and hopefully <clears throat> improve some of that pedestrian safety. There's a lot of people that live along that corridor that don't have access to a car, so they bike, they walk, and, um, and providing that access. So we've had seven deaths from 2015 to 2018 just for pedestrians and bicyclists, 17 serious injuries, and that's not including what's happened this past year. Um, and so this is a picture of, of Rivers Avenue today. As you can see, it's not a very safe um, crossing. We have about five miles um, along the roadway where there is no safe place to cross. What, what, one of the things that we have to do because we are applying for federal funds is um, we have to do an environmental review to clear the project through the National Environmental Policy Act. So we're kicking that process off this summer. Uh, one of the things we'll do is really define that purpose of ne and need. So we have all of this information on our website. and We're going through um, our series of public outreach like this event, and we're looking for feedback from the community on the purpose and need uh, for this particular project. So what's been identified so far is a project that can improve mobility and connectivity of the transit system, provide a cost-effective and reasonable accessible transit alternative, and one that will support the land use and transit plans for our region. So we invite you to provide your feedback on that. Right now, we're going through our alternatives evaluation. So we started with a lot of different corridors in I-26 and a lot of different modes. We screened it down to BRT and a few corridors. We screened it down to about 16 alternatives. Some of those we fatal flawed out because they just didn't make sense, and we are down to 12 reasonable alternatives. So on the um, 78 side from where I-26 and 78, merge. 78 was the preferred alternative from the um, I-26 alt study. We did hear feedback from the community that they wanted to see if I-26 to Nexton or a connection to Nexton would be a reasonable alternative. So we are evaluating that to see if that's a reasonable alternative for today or in the future. Uh, the Rivers Avenue corridor is pretty much um, defined by that median corridor. And then as we get into the neck area, as I mentioned, we'll look at Meeting Street and King Street, and then we have several alternatives through the peninsula. So over the next uh, year and a half, we'll be going through this environmental review process. We'll be doing a lot of detailed studies on these alternatives, looking at impacts to the community, impacts to the environment, looking at riderships and, and costs. And do you find that balance that where do we maximize the most riders um, for the best cost for the project? So that ultimately will come down to one locally preferred alternative. So what are our next steps? We do have coming up what we call a transit-oriented development study. So what the tra transit-oriented development study, which is also referred to as a TOD study, will do, it will look at all 18 of the station areas along the line and say, which ones of these station areas really need to um, be preserved, kept in place, and focus on the neighborhood? And where along the station areas do we have a need for more intense development, more mixed uses, more transit-friendly types of developments where you have higher intensity of, of employment, higher intensity of housing, 
housing, affordable housing, and some of those key components that really help a transit system. So we'll be doing about a nine-month study really looking at the entire um, corridor, putting together master plans for those station areas that the communities can adopt, working closely with the communities to understand where they want to see their community grow and how it interacts, how they want to interact with the actual system. And then the, the environmental process will take about a year and a half as well. Uh, then, once we finish the environmental review process, we anticipate about three years to construct the project. As I mentioned, it's a 26-mile corridor, complete redesign and rebuild of that Rivers Avenue corridor. So we anticipate about a three-year construction timeline, which would be a 2025 opening day. Um, we do have all of this information on our website. As I said, we have an online meeting going on right now that provides a lot of different videos. It provides a, a map where you can look a little closer at the alternatives. We want to hear from the community, particularly this community, um, that will be a, a, an integral part of the, the destination for the BRT. Where, where these station locations are located, which ones really need to be more developed, which ones are not in the right place, if there's a location we're overlooking along this line, um, there's opportunity for you to provide feedback to the team, and then, of course, sign up for our, our mailing list so you can get updates on it. Um, my contact is up there as well, and I do know it's a new concept for our region, so there's probably a lot of questions about how it works, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have.